Hey everyone, Nick Raboy here. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to use navigation cards in a Vue.js project. So you might be wondering, what is a navigation card? So these are often also called nav guards or route guards. And what they do is they give you more control over navigation in your Vue.js project. Or if you're using Angular or React, they have similar concepts in those frameworks as well. Um, and they, I think they're even called the same thing. But this is a Vue.js tutorial. And where you might want to use a navigation card is maybe when it comes to authentication of different areas of your application. So for example, maybe your user has to log in and they log in and it's validated against some remote server. Uh, that server says, yes, you're now logged in. No, you're not logged in. In the occasion where they are not logged in, well, maybe we don't want them to view certain pages of your application. Uh, and then maybe when you, they are logged in, then those pages become accessible to them. Um, so this, this is where navigation card uh, guards could become useful. It's uh, by no means the only circumstance that you could be using them for, um, but it is, a, it is a common scenario, and that's what we're going to be exploring in this particular tutorial. So I do have a terminal open. Uh, I am navigated to my desktop. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project, and we're going to see how to use these navigation guards in action. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say view. I'm going to say create. I'm going to call it nav project. I'm going to choose the defaults and we're going to add certain features as we go along. All right, so we've got our project. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open that project. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code uh, for this particular example. Use whatever you feel the most comfortable with. This is just a text editor. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to first navigate into nav project. I'm going to say code and I'm going to open it. So as you can see, uh, we do have our project open. I'm going to open up my terminal within Visual Studio Code so that way we can continue to use the terminal um, kind of within our editor experience. Before we start editing any files, we need to get two more packages included in our project. So the first of which is we're going to say npm install and we're going to say view x and we're going to say hyphen hyphen save. So this is going to be our data store. Uh, to be used within our application, Vuex, it, it's very common. We're also going to install another one. We're going to say npm, let me first clear my terminal here. npm install, we're going to say view router, and we're going to say hyphen hyphen save. So again, the uh, Vuex is going to be used for storing our credentials after logging in. And we're just going to simulate a login. We're not going to actually connect to any remote server in this example. Um, but we will be kind of mimicking what would happen in a, in a real scenario. So I'm going to clear my terminal. Uh, the next step that we want to do is we want to create uh, various components that will represent our routes, so navigatable areas within our application. So let's go ahead and open up source. We're going to open up components. We do have a hello world component. Uh, let's just go ahead and clone that. So I'm going to say copy and I'm going to paste it into components and we're going to be ignoring the hello world component long term. But for now, let's just go ahead and rename this. Let's go ahead and rename this to maybe uh, secure.view. So this secure.view file is going to represent where we want our user to end up after they sign in, but we don't want this secure.view file accessible unless they are properly authenticated. So let's go ahead and clear out uh, a lot of this project file. We're going to clear out what's inside of the template. We're going to uh, clear out our styles because this is just going to be a very basic application. Uh, we are going to leave the style tags there just in case we want to revisit them towards the end. And I'm going to fix the indentation for uh, my script because I'm using four spaces as my tabbing, uh, whereas I think it, it defaults to two when you spin up a new project. And it's just more of a sanity thing. It, it'll drive me crazy if it doesn't match properly. So we're going to rename this. Uh, let's just go ahead and maybe call it secure um, inside of our template. Maybe let's add some, some text to say that, hey, this is a secure page. So I'm going to say div. Um, so let me fix that. We're going to say maybe h1. Maybe this is a secure area. We're going to say uh, maybe p. So for paragraph, let's say this is a secure area. So nothing, nothing very complex here. This is going to be just very basic HTML. 
the whole purpose here is to show that, hey, we made it here um, and we used navigation guards in the process. We're also gonna uh, wipe out these properties. We're not gonna use properties on this because this is gonna represent a route, not an actual component that we're gonna recycle throughout our application. Uh, but this this should be good now. It's, it's very basic, um, but it, it's gonna work. All right, so let's create another component. I'm just gonna copy the secure component because there's not a whole lot in there. I'm gonna say copy. I'm gonna paste it into the components directory. And I'm gonna rename this to be, uh, let's go ahead and say login.view. Uh, so for now, let's go ahead and wipe out what's inside the template. Let's go ahead and change the uh, class name to, let's say, login. Um, and what we can do is we can actually start adding uh, various HTML components. So this is going to represent our form. So what the user types in for a username and password, um, and then some very basic logic for validation. Uh, so let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and uh, set up the data that, that uh, the user can uh, provide and, and work with. So we're going to say data. This is going to be our um, models for, for um, binding, binding our data to the form. So data return, we're going to say, uh, let's go ahead and say that this is going to be inputs for like uh, form inputs. You can, you can uh, name it however you want, how, whatever makes the most sense to you. Uh, but let's say that we're going to have an input for username and we're going to have an input for password. Let's go ahead and say that we're going to have a few methods. Um, so again, this is inside of our view class. So we're going to say methods. We're going to have a method uh, called login. And when we try to log in, we're, we're going to do some very basic uh, validation. So we're going to say if this dot input dot username, because we defined it on line 13 and 14, if that equals, again, we're hard coding it here because we're not going to use a remote data service. Uh, definitely don't hard code this in your application. This is just for demonstration purposes of uh, what we're going to be doing with the nav guards. Uh, in reality, you're going to want to make an HTTP request and you're going to want to validate that way. So let's go ahead and say if this equals admin, uh, we're also going to say and this.input.password equals, let's go ahead and say pass. Uh, then we know that the user has provided the correct login credentials. And I feel like I need to reiterate this one more time. Don't hard code this in production. This is for testing purposes only. We're going to say else, um, and we're going to say maybe console.log, and we're going to say uh, the username or password is not correct. And this is going to be uh, evolve as we go along. And for now, we're not going to have any kind of uh, logic inside of here yet. Uh, because we're not working with Vuex, uh, but we will. Uh, so this should be good for now. Um, what we could do is that we let's actually, before we, we move along, let's go ahead and create that uh, form uh, because that will bind our username and password, give our user something to type in. Uh, let's go ahead and say maybe H1, we're going to say login page. Inside of here, we're going to have an input. Let's go ahead and say that this is type text. Let's go ahead and say that the name of the input is going to be username. We're going to bind it. So we're going to say V model equals, we're going to say input dot username, uh, because this is this username, this input username is our variables, which we're then working with in our method. Uh, so that's our V model. Uh, we're going to have a placeholder. Let's just go ahead and say username. We can close that tag. Uh, let's go ahead and do another line here. I just cloned it. This one's going to be the password. I'm going to bind it to input.password. The um, placeholder is going to be password. And it's not going to be of type text. It's going to be of type password. So that way it's masked. And then finally, let's have an input. So that way we can submit our form and call that login function. Let's go ahead and say button. We're going to say type equals button. We're going to say v on click equals login. And that's going to be that login method. And we're going to say, let's call this login button. Um, so, so we have a, a very basic form. And if I were to run this, uh, nothing would happen because I'm not, first of all, I'm not calling this component directly. And we haven't set up our router as of yet. Um, so, that's going to be one of the next steps. But before we actually even set up the router, we're going to do some more uh, boilerplate kind of bootstrapping of our project. 
we're going to configure view X. So let's go ahead and go to our main.js file inside of our source directory. So this is going to be where we set up view X. Uh, first of all, we need to import it. So I'm going to say import view X from I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm saying view X wrong. It's probably called something else, but I know it as view X. Uh, we're going to say view X. The next step, and you can have a semicolon there or not. Um, but the next step is we need to initialize it. So um, let's go ahead and say view dot use view X, because that's what we just imported. And we're going to, we're going to define our store. So we're going to say constant store equals new view X dot store. And we're going to define some mutation functions as well as uh, some data that can be mutated. So let's go ahead and say, first of all, let's go ahead and say that we have a state. That state has a variable called authenticated false. And um, the goal here isn't to show you how to use view X. Um, it's not even to show you how to use the router. We're going to be showing how to use the, the navigation guards. But again, this is all set up. Um, so that way you are kind of on your way to being successful with this. All right, so we have authenticated as false. That's the default value here. Uh, let's go ahead and set up our mutations. So this is going to be how our components can actually interact with that authenticated variable. So we're going to say mutations. This is going to be an object. Uh, let's go ahead and say set authentication. Uh, we're going to have a state and we're going to have a status. So we're going to say state.authenticated equals whatever the user provides as a status. So this is going to be just a true or false. So that's our store. It's by no means a complicated store in compared to what it could be, um, but it'll it'll serve its purpose for this example. Let me go ahead and fix the indentation for uh, render.h here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're also going to add store now. Uh, so we're going to say store, and that's going to be store right here. So store being uh, one of the properties that you could have for view. Uh, this part being uh, what we've defined as a constant on line 9. So we save it. Uh, we're good so far. Um, the next step here is, well, we want to try to use the view store. Um, so we, we've defined it in main.js. Let's go ahead and drop back into login.view. This is where we're going to define our logic here on line 24 uh, in our login function. And all we're really going to say is we're going to say this dot uh, dollar sign store dot commit. Um, so we're going to commit a change to the variable. So the mutation that we're going to call is set authentication. And the value that we're going to set is it's going to be true. So it's going to be authenticated. Otherwise, it's going to remain false and uh, nothing is going to have changed. So now let's define our router. Um, so this is kind of where we get into the core subject material. I know that I know that we've dragged on a little bit because you really wanted to see well, how do I use a navigation guard? Uh, but I didn't want to just drop you right into navigation guards because then you might be lost in regard to the setup. Uh, so we're going to go back into main.js. Uh, we're going to add some things now. Remember, we've already imported the view router. So we're going to say import view router from view router. We're also going to import each of our routes so each of our two components so we're going to say import login from component slash login dot view and it's actually components i'm also going to import secure so we have both of our components here and they're they're a little grayed out because we're not using them yet uh, but we will so just like we did with uh, using view x we're going to say view dot use we're going to say view router. We're also going to define the routes for that router. So we can do that after store. Um, let's go ahead and add a semicolon there for consistency. But we're going to say constant router equals new view router. And let's go ahead and add our routes. So we're going to say routes. This is going to be an array. We're going to say path. So this is going to be the default path. So this is the root path. What we're going to do is because we don't really have a, re, uh, a root path, we don't have a home page. We're just going to assume that uh, the first entry point into this application is going to be 
uh, the login page. So we're going to redirect. We're going to redirect to uh, login, which we're going to define in a second. And it's actually it's actually yelling at us here uh, because I just have an array. It should be an object. So an array of objects. All right, so it's going to redirect to login. Uh, we're going to create login right now. Uh, again, this is the kind of the default page. Um, so this is another object. We're going to say path. This is going to be login. Uh, it could be anything you want, um, but this is just what we're going to define it as because it, it kind of makes the most sense. We're going to say name. Um, so this is login. Again, this could also be whatever you want. It's just going to match what we have on line 31 here. What matters really is the component. So the component, we're going to say that it's going to reference the actual component, so login.view that we created with the form and the, and the very brief login logic, uh, that kind of stuff. So that's what's important to us. Then finally, we have secure. So this is another object. We have path. This is going to be secure. We have name. This is going to be secure. We have component which is going to be secure.view, so secure. Um, and if we wanted to, this would technically work, although we don't have route guards yet. Um, so let's go ahead and wire up the router. We're going to test it out. We're going to see why the, the navigation guards are, are helpful to us. And then we're going to add those navigation guards. So down in the view uh, constructor here, let's go ahead and say router. This is going to reference the router that we had just defined. Um, I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. it. Hopefully it should work. So I'm going to say npm run serve. We've got an error somewhere. Uh, console.log. Unexpected console statement. This is probably the linter. Um, the linter probably doesn't like what we're doing here. So we're just going to comment it out. Um, so it's not going to do anything. It's fine. Uh, we'll make it work. So it's going to run it. It's uh, running on port 8080. Um, so let's go to our web browser. Let's go to localhost 8080. So we have our view app. Uh, the problem here is, you know what? We've got this old template from the hello world. Uh, so that means that we, we haven't really finished configuring everything. So we're going to let it run still. Uh, it's still serving. Uh, what we actually want to do is we want to go to the app.view file. Uh, we need to make some changes because remember, right now it's using hello world still. Uh, we're kind of scrapping this mentality. Um, so let's start removing things. Let's let's remove the styles. Let's uh, remove a lot of the template here. And instead, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, router. So we're going to say a router view. And let me fix let me fix the tabbing because yeah, again, uh, it it will make me crazy personally. So we have a router view. This is going to be where each of our routes uh, render into. What we can also do is we can remove this hello world. Uh, we're not using it anymore. And let's go ahead and fix the indents here. So that should be good. Uh, I don't need this import anymore. It's not, it's not necessary. Let's go back into our Google Chrome or whatever browser we're using. And you can see here that we've got a login page. Uh, so let's go ahead and test it out. Uh, test, test, nothing happens admin pass again nothing happens because uh, we, we don't actually have any redirects happening um, so let's let's go ahead and make some changes let's go back into our visual studio code um, we'll go back into login.view um, right after we set this commit and again no navigation guards are happening yet um, but let's go ahead and say this dot dollar sign router dot replace so we're going to replace the current route um, so we're going to say name is going to be secure. So remember we have a we have a, a route called secure and that's what it's using. Um, so I saved it. Go back into my Google Chrome. I'm going to say admin. I'm going to say uh, pass. I click login. Took me to the secure area. Uh, I'm going to just refresh the page here. Um, so I'll refresh it. I'm going to try to go directly to secure. Uh, and I was able to. Uh, when I refreshed the page, I actually, it should have cleared anything that I had in that Vuex store. 
Um, so as you can see, I was able to directly navigate to this secure page. And this is this is what we want to prevent in the long term here. We, we don't want users to be able to access this unless they are truly authenticated. Um, so and now to the kind of core material of this, what this video is meant to provide. If I go to, uh, not secure, main.js, you'll notice that this is a very small um, addition to our project. But if I go to this secure route, I can add to it. I can add my navigation guard. Uh, so I can say before enter. I'm going to say to, from, and next. Uh, so this is this is where we gather information about the route that's happening, or the routing event that's happening. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say if the store, so the current Vuex store, if the state of the authenticated variable is equal to false, that means we're not authenticated. We should not be able to visit that secure page. So what we're going to say is we're going to say next is going to be false. Now, else, we're going to say next with nothing in it. So what we're saying is when we say next is equal to false, we're saying don't proceed to the route. Do not continue routing to the secure page. Just stop. Otherwise, if we have no false in there, we're saying, you know what? Let's go ahead and allow the user to reach this particular route. Um, and we can make adjustments in a second, but I'm going to save it. I'm going to go back into Google Chrome. I'm going to say that I want to refresh it. I'm going to say secure. And nothing happened. Um, which is exactly as it should. Now let's go ahead and log in now. So let's go ahead and say admin, pass, log in. Now I'm in that secure area. If I refresh it, it may take me back. Uh, it took me back to nowhere because it, it didn't know what to do. So this is where we can actually optimize this. Instead of saying false, uh, we can provide it a path to go to instead. Um, so what we can do is we can actually say log in. So we're saying if, uh, if authentication is false, let's redirect that user back to the login page so they can uh, proceed to logging in. So let's go ahead and try it out. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, type in secure. Took us to login. Let's go uh, log in here. Uh, looks good so far. If I refresh, it took me back to login page uh, because if I refresh, that store is cleared out. Uh, I should not be authenticated. Secure should not be navigatable to. Um, so instead, it redirects me to the login page. Um, so there are actually other types of events that you can catch uh, during the routing process. Uh, but before enter is a good example of one. Um, so in this case, we've just detected, you know, where where is the user uh, trying to go? Are they properly authenticated or are they allowed to go to that that area? Uh, otherwise, stop them or send them somewhere else. So this this very small chunk of code is actually what this tutorial had set out to prove. I know that we did a lot of setup. We created two components, a login component, uh, which, which has a form and some authentication logic, uh, a secure page, uh, which is a secure area that we wanted to protect. Uh, we have the main.js file. We created our uh, Vuex store, which which wasn't entirely absolutely necessary, uh, but it was good because we were able to access that store inside of the navigation guard. Um, but um, it was just a lot of setup that led us to these few lines. Um, so this this could be very valuable to you. Um, again, don't don't hard code your your login, and also um, you probably want to have other means to check authentication status. I mean, don't rely strictly on your front end um, to protect pages. Uh, instead, uh, maybe maybe you want to check to see if a JWT token is stored, um, and then if yes, allow them to navigate through. And then you know what? They're probably just going to make an HTTP request from that secure page for actual data. Um, so it's all up to you on how you decide that you want to design it. Uh, but this this is uh, some good code that will uh, protect various routes that you have in your application for view.